，老干妈，老干妈，老干妈，老干妈，细柳花梗，老干妈，老干妈，老干妈，老干妈 absolutely slaps, and I pity the fool yet to try it. But the backstory of China's favourite condiment and its founder is just as interesting. Meet Tao Huabi, creator of Lao Gan Ma, the sauce that is a household name in China and can complement pretty much anything. To say Tao came from extremely humble beginnings would be an understatement. Yet she's created one of China's most well-known and well-loved condiments. This is her story. In 1947, Tao was born in a remote village in Zunyi in Guizhou Province. Tao's parents struggled to feed and clothe their children, let alone give them a proper education. So unsurprisingly, Tao was never taught how to read and write. During the Great Chinese Famine from 1959 to 1961, Tao had to resort to digging for wild vegetables and tried various ways to eat plant roots, using whatever she had to try and make the limited food taste better. This poverty and hunger drove Tao to make her very first chili sauce, made from medicinal plants from the mountains and homegrown chili peppers. In 1967, when Tao was 20, she married a local accountant, and they would eventually have two sons together. But the good life would not last long. Just a few years into their marriage, Tao's husband became seriously ill with liver disease. Tao was in a pickle. Uneducated, illiterate, and with no official working experience, she needed to provide an income for her family, as they had no money to cover her husband's medical costs and for the family's food and education. This situation caused Tao to leave the countryside for the first time in her life to go to Guangzhou to find a factory job. She brought her own homemade chili sauce with her and used it to flavor steamed buns when she couldn't afford any other food. She also shared it with co-workers who thought her chili sauce was delicious. Unfortunately, Tao's husband would eventually pass away. Now a widow and sole caregiver for the family, she had to return back to Guizhou to take care of her two young boys. To make ends meet, she started making rice curd late at night. And selling it the next day around the schools in Long Dang Bao, Tao would buy the ingredients she needed from a store located around five kilometers away, and she would aim to board the first bus of the day. But the bus drivers would often refuse to let her on because her basket took up too much space. So more often than not, Tao walked the five k's each way to get the ingredients she needed. This grit and determination would translate well into Tao's future business endeavors, which we're about to see. If we fast forward a while after Tao's sons had grown up. She was visiting a local noodle shop after work and complained to the shop owner that their cold noodles were not authentic enough. Tao gave the lady her tips and tricks on how to improve the noodles using chili oil, and unexpectedly, Tao was offered a job at the noodle stall on the spot. This experience at the shop would be critical in giving Tao the idea to start her own business. In 1989, when Tao was 42, she set up her own little economical restaurant in the Nanming district of Guiyang in Guizhou. She served simple noodles, but mixed them with her own spicy hot sauce with soybeans. Tao was a neighborhood hero, where she became a godmother to poor students, whom she gave discounts and extra food to. With many students as keen customers, thanks to the cheap and tasty nature of her meal, Tao's noodle store flourished. But not because of the noodles. Tao started to realize the popularity of her condiment when people started coming in to purchase the sauce, Sun's noodles. Word started to spread about Tao and her chili sauce too. In 1994. Construction of a new highway in the area meant a lot more truck drivers started to pass by Tao's shop. Tao took this as a chance to promote her condiments outside the realm of her own neighborhood and started giving out her sauces for free for the truckers to take home. These truck drivers provided invaluable advertisers, spreading Lao Gan Ma to countless Guiyang households, causing people to drive from the inner city to the outer suburbs just to buy her chili sauce. Word of mouth marketing was the driving factor for Lao Gan Ma taking off. Another incident that reinforced the idea that the future of her business relied solely on the condiment was that one day, when the sauce had sold out, customers would not even eat her noodles without a special sauce. Add to the fact that Tao learned that other noodle shops in the neighborhood were all doing good business by using her homemade sauce in their noodles. She finally truly realized the potential of her condiment. But getting her to close her restaurant and focus solely on the sauce was a different story. Nanming officials tried desperately to persuade Tao to give up on the restaurant and open a chili sauce factory, but she refused. And her reasoning: If I close my store, where will the students eat? In the end, even the students she looked after began urging Tao to go all in on the production of her sauces. Finally, in August 1996, at the age of 49, she relented and borrowed two buildings from the local government to set up her factory. She recruited 40 workers, and since the factory initially had no machines, the chore of chopping chunky Chinese chilies was done manually. 
Tao herself would help cut chilies at the factory tables together with her workers. Although Tao never had any formal education, she turned out to have a natural talent for managing her flourishing company. It wasn't smooth sailing to the top though. Despite the sudden rise and success of Lao Ga Ma, or maybe because of it, Tao struggled for years as a handful of competitors launched fake copycat sauces with similar packaging, which nearly ruined her business. Luckily, the High Court in Beijing finally ruled in 2001 that other similar products could not use the Lao Ga Ma name nor imitate her packages. A rare win for intellectual property rights in China. Fast forward nearly 20 years, and in 2015, Forbes calculated Tao Hua Bi's worth at nearly a billion dollars. In 2019, Lao Ga Ma was selected as one of the top 100 brands in China, together with other famous national brands such as China Mobile, Huawei, TikTok, and Alibaba. In 2020, the company saw its annual sales revenue reach a record high of more than $800 million. And today, Tao's chili empire has gone global. Lao Ga Ma produces more than 2.3 million bottles a day, uses 45,000 tons of chili peppers a year, and uses more than 100,000 tons of vegetable oil, and now exports to over 30 countries. Apparently, Tao operates Lao Ga Ma with four no's in mind. No tax evasion, no loans, no debt, and no IPO listing, Tao says. I don't know anything about listing and financing. All I know is that once you go public, you may go bankrupt. Listing is deceiving people's money, so I'm determined not to go public. In the last few years, Tao has passed over control of her company onto her two sons, but the jury is still out on how successful they've been in running it. But one thing remains certain. The popularity of Tao Hua Bi and Lao Ga Ma is not slowing down. Locally, Tao is known as the miracle of Guizhou, and for good reason. Despite the many offers throughout her career to set up her business elsewhere, she always stayed true to her home province, apparently much to the delight of local government officials, mind you. She's been an absolute godsend for the province. Not only with her brand becoming known for the unique product of Guizhou, but also for her offering employment to over 4,000 people, directly and indirectly generating income for tens of thousands of farmers through the amount of chili she uses as well. I guess you could say Tao is the hottest woman in China. When looking at Lao Gan Ma's success in the West, it is a tad unusual though. Entirely marketed in Chinese, with labels displaying no English beyond the fine print, relying on visual cues of the design for an international market not accustomed to reading other languages. Lao Gan Ma rarely advertises, has no social media strategy, no celebrity partnerships, and the iconic design has never been modernized. We're selling the flavor, not the packaging, Tao says. Lao Gan Ma has developed a powerful brand recognition that most could only dream of. And I'm looking forward to eating it on my eggs for many years to come.